Let's take a look at some stats and charts from the latest EOS article on Brave New Coin. So EOS is a little different than many other chains in that it uses delegated proof of stake and delegated proof of stake uses a governance system of top 21 block producers so they get paid to confirm the blocks basically and secure the network and if we look at the list of 21 there's kind of two issues that i have with it if it were my network if i was the one behind the code so first most not most but there are at least four bps here that are exchanges, so Huobi, Bitfinex, OKEx, New Dex is, is an exchange, obviously it's a Dex, um, and I think, where was it, there was another one, WhaleX, I think that's an exchange as well. So that's the first issue, obviously there's a bit of a conflict of interest there with network stuff and exchange stuff, and the more that they're hand in hand, the higher the risk of things like a chain reorg or some sort of governance issue happening that exchanges might like but the network and the community might not like probably the more concerning thing is the number of nodes in china so there are at least eight um, on this list that are in china most of these are in asia singapore or china so it's certainly not decentralized from the point of view that it's global south korea here as well it's certainly concentrated in asia more so than anywhere else Another issue that I couldn't really nail down for EOS and many chains is the size of the full node. Now you need the full node to run things like dApps and the full gamut of smart contract capabilities because you need to know balances, you need to know transactions, you need to know all these things on the chain and if there aren't any full nodes that becomes a problem. The fewer the full nodes there are, the more centralization there is. So this all goes back to centralization in sort of three different ways one being exchanges controlling the network two being asia and china controlling the network and the third being just the lack of full nodes on the network and the size of the full nodes so that means that if the full nodes are large multiple gigabytes or terabytes few people are going to just individually run a node either based on the size of the node, the cost of the node, the time it takes to set up the node and deal with that sort of thing. So that's going to be an issue for EOS going forward as well, especially now that they're trying to introduce more and more stuff onto EOS, which is what they wanted to do from the beginning with dApps and smart contracts and this voice social network thing that's actually going to be on a separate blockchain initially and ideally will be integrated with EOS. but. I guess that remains to be seen. And one of the reasons it remains to be seen is because as soon as we have this run up in transactions on EOS, so this is transactions per day, the line and the fill is blocks produced per day. So back in October, November, there was this airdrop called EIDOS, which encouraged basically transaction mining. And as soon as that happened, blocks produced per day fell off precipitously because the network got clogged, the network was unable to handle all that traffic. And you can see how we had these millions and millions of transactions, and now it's hovering basically around a million. Blocks produced went way down uh, per day. So there was all these issues with EOS. Now I can't really find a place where I can visualize like pending transactions on EOS like I can other chains. So that's another question mark as far as what did the pending transactions look like? What was the cost to send those transactions? Other than a EOS cost, but a time cost, a, a pending, you know, if you can't send your transactions on your chain, then there's an issue there. So this is probably why, among other reasons, why this voice thing isn't going to launch initially on the EOS chain directly. Yeah. Obviously, if transactions that blocks produced per day are, are coming off, it's certainly not a bullish thing. You want transactions to continue to pick up. Um, and this, with this weirdness about ranging in the millions per day on a fee-less chain, it's hard to actually to know like what's valuable here. Is this meaningless because it's just fee-less transactions? That's the viewpoint of many people. And you know, as soon as it, it tries to ramp up, it just falls off the table. So that's certainly not, not a bullish picture. Uh, one thing that was a concern early on with EOS as well was the cost of RAM. So RAM, like on ETH, is 
gas basically so the cost to send transactions open up an account that sort of thing initially it was sort of cornered in the market by a handful of people and then they added more ram to the network and this hasn't become a concern since then now despite what i said about the fundamentals of eos the technicals of eos look really good much like most of the market right now and if you watch the eth video from a few days ago it's basically the same spiel the same story so if we look at long short ratio on bitfinex if we look at the 50 and the 200 emas the red and the green here the vpvr volume profile of the visible range that's these horizontal bars and volume and an oscillator i like our size because it's clean and easy to look for divergences so you can see we're, we're headed for a key cross on the 50 and the 200 on the daily this is known as a golden cross everybody looks at this especially in legacy markets so everyone, everyone's aware of the significance here of the, this cross from a bullish perspective typically signals bullish continuation as it did here inversely the death cross the 200 over the 50 signifies bearish continuation as it did here as it did here so these are big big time crosses on the emas if you're an ema fan another thing i see is the bitfinex longs are massively outpacing the shorts here it's like 96 percent long now that becomes a big issue if price actually goes down because then those longs may or may not start closing and as they start closing that pushes price down further this is known as a long squeeze and if you know anything about the tesla chart and what's happened with tesla they've experienced a short squeeze leading into this week and that sort of propelled the chart catapulted it up even further so that's what you don't want to see on eos is the long squeeze because that just tends to keep price down and it's a pretty violent reaction when that happens the good news is longs have sort of been at the same level for a couple of years now so it's unlikely that lower prices are going to really deter any of these longs i mean they were long basically from the all-time high and most of these are still long from the all-time high assuming that they haven't been closed and refreshed by different people but anyway the point is <laughs> i wouldn't worry about a long squeeze even though it looks pretty dramatic here um, looking at the rsi for divergences you can see we have a lower high in rsi and a higher high in price it says there's waning bullish momentum it's unlike to, unlikely to just shoot up anytime soon it's going to need to consolidate the rsi is going to need to reset the oscillators are going to need to chill out a little bit you can see the div on volume here not as dramatic but it's certainly there and then the, the vpvr and the pivots also show a resistance zone from like 450 to 550 and a yearly pivot basically where price touched so together we can say okay we have a golden cross coming this is bullish longs are whatever they're high and insane levels but probably not too relevant we have a bear div here into resistance which isn't something you want to see if you want immediate continuation so it's it's most more likely that it's going to consolidate for a little bit gather its strength and then attempt to break this pivot and going to have an interesting time in the 450 550 zone and then it's going to have to deal with another pivot after that and another zone after that so it's got plenty of upside overhead resistance here now this local high from june is going to be big time resistance but over the next three to six months these levels if we're bullish are going to be less of an issue obviously than if we're bearish it certainly looks pretty good for the upside overall another way to look at this is using a pitchfork which is just a channel trend basically and the yellow line is always the median where price wants to continually come back to and touch and retest and you can see on the way down it did that it retested over and over and over then it failed and tested the bottom then we tested it again on the way up then we tested the top then we <laughs> went back to the median line back to the median line over and over and over again so now we're on the upper diagonal resistance and again this is just more confluence for reasons as to why this isn't going to shoot through anything this is just another layer of resistance in the trend that it's going to need to consolidate before confirming continuation if we look at the cloud we can see we are bullish on every metric we're above the cloud cloud is bullish tk cross is bullish lagging spans bullish so again long term just like that golden cross this looks really good for more up uh, in the mid mid to long term and lastly if we look at eos btc very similar things 
Uh, one difference being it's sort of based here for six to eight months and it's currently ready for a golden cross. Again, you have a bear div, higher high price, lower high in RSI. VPVR and pivot's a little higher as far as resistance is concerned, around that 60k psychological zone. Uh, this local low is going to be a horizontal resistance. This local low is going to be horizontal resistance. But overall, trend-wise, it looks really good, especially when you see this multi-month basing period, half a year. That's exactly what you want to see when you're looking for a bottom, you know, a, a distribution accumulation profile. This would be an accumulation profile, especially this huge volume node. This says not only was it here for a long time price-wise, but a lot of volume transacted, and that speaks again to that accumulation sort of profile. 